Hello, my name is Dick Baldwin, and I want to welcome you to my online lectures for ITSE 2321 Object Oriented Programming using Java. This series of online lectures will approximate the lectures that I normally deliver in the classroom each semester. When completed, this series of online lectures will consist of quite a few hours of video material broken down into 15 different lectures. Each lecture will be broken down into YouTube length segments of approximately 15 minutes each. This is the beginning of part one of lecture three titled Implementing a Spacewise Linear Color Modification Algorithm. I invite you to visit my college website at the URL that I am highlighting right now. where you will find the syllabus for this course along with other online information regarding this course. I also invite you to visit my personal website at the URL that I am highlighting right now. You will find more than 600 tutorials that I have written on various aspects of computer programming, digital signal processing, and other computer related topics on that site. Students enrolled in this course are expected to, stu to study my tutorial lessons numbered 1600 through 1630 at the URL that I am highlighting right now along with the material in the course textbook. Without further delay, let's enter the world of object-oriented programming. This is the beginning of part one of lecture number three titled Implementing a Spacewise Linear Color Modification Algorithm. For the program that I will explain in this lesson. The student is provided an image file named prob03.jpg along with a written specification of a spacewise linear image modification algorithm. The student's task is to write the code that will transform the image that you see on the upper right side of your screen to the image that you see on the bottom right side of your screen. In addition, the student must write the code required to produce the text that you see on the right hand side of the screen on the command line. So the primary purpose of this problem is to determine if the student can implement a known algorithm and also satisfy some requirements for text output. Among other things, this requires that the student must be able to create a picture object from an image file, write an accessor method to return a reference to the picture object, modify the pixels in the picture according to the specified algorithm, display the raw picture and the modified picture in 
picture explorer objects by calling the explorer method on the picture object both before and after it is modified. The algorithm is to scale the blue and green color components for each pixel by a scale factor that is less than or equal to 1.0. The green scale factor is equal to 1.0 on the left side of the image is equal to 0, 0.0 on the right side of the image and decreases linearly with distance going from left to right across the image. The blue scale factor is 0, 0.0 on the left side of the image is 1.0 on the right side of the image and increases linearly with distance going from left to right across the image. As you can see this is not a complex algorithm but it does require the student have some knowledge of elementary algebra. The algorithm further requires that no scale factor is to be applied to the red color components. In other words, the red component, red color components are to be left untouched. As usual, I will explain this program by breaking it down and explaining it in fragments. I will begin with the driver class named Prob03 which is shown in, in its entirety on the right hand side of your screen. There is nothing new in the driver class in listing 1 that I haven't previously explained in earlier lessons. Therefore, I won't waste your time by explaining it again. As you can see, however, the driver class instantiates a new object of the class named Prob03Runner and calls the run method on that object after it is instantiated. The beginning of the class named Prob03Runner is now showing on the right hand side of your screen. Once again there is nothing new in the code in listing 2 on the right side of your screen. There is a constructor which simply prints my name along with an accessor method that returns a reference to the picture object. In addition, the code in listing 2 instantiates a new object of the class named picture using the given image file as a parameter and stores that object's reference in the reference variable named pick. The run method begins in listing 3 on the right hand side of your screen. Before getting into the code for the run method however, I want to point out a major difference between this program and the program that I explained in Lecture 2. In Lecture 2, exactly the same operations were performed on, on every pixel belonging to the image. 
Therefore, it wasn't necessary for us to be concerned about the physical location of the image of the pixels in the image with respect to their horizontal and vertical coordinate positions. In this algorithm, however, the operations that are that will be performed on each pixel will depend on the distance of that pixel from the right and left edges of the image. Therefore, it will be necessary in this algorithm for us to deal with the horizontal and vertical locations of each individual pixel. In dealing with the horizontal and vertical coordinate positions of the individual pixels, there is a relatively easy way to do it and a more difficult way to do it. I will show you the more difficult way in this lecture and I will show you an easier way in a future lecture. The run method begins in a way that you have seen before. In particular, the add message method is called on a reference to the picture object to cause my name to be displayed in the upper left hand corner of the image. Then the explorer method is called to display that state of the picture object in a visual object of type picture explorer. The next statement in the run method is code that you have seen before. This statement calls the getPixels method on the reference to the picture object. The getPixels method constructs a one-dimensional array containing objects of type pixel where each element in the array represents one physical pixel in the image. The reference to the object containing that array is stored in the reference variable named pixels. The last six statements in listing three simply declare and initialize six local variables of various types that will serve as working variables in the implementation of the required algorithm. 